Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter 5000 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 5000. Enjoy. Amen, amen. God bless you, family of God. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, once again on the Blaze Bible Studies. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at Soul Winners with a Z, W O R G. W O R G. No, Soul Winners with a Z dot O R G. That's right. And it's also available on the TuneIn, the iTunes, the Spreaker app, Stitcher app. Uh, iHeartRadio, and many networks around the online web, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, amen. So wherever there's a podcast available, you can find the Blaze Bible Studies with your brother DJ Sam Rock. just want to thank every single listener for continuing to support the ministry, the Bible study. It's the Word of God, so I really don't have a lot to say other than what God says um, and what He says through me, amen. And also, for those who are looking for a Bible study um, for different topics, there's an archive of over close. I think it's over 400 archived Bible studies. I covered so many topics that I can't even remember um, what they were, but they are archived. So you might be thinking about money, relationships, um, faith, uh, you know, sickness, uh, anything that you can think of that you have a question about. I probably by now covered probably 70% of your questions. Amen. So God is good. Uh, This has been a run for me uh, for many years now. And I'm grateful that God has chosen uh, someone who just simply said, "This this is all I did. I said yes to God for what he had in my life. And he took it from there. (laughs) Amen. I mean, we play a part in it. Of course, we have to be available, ready to listen to his word, study out his word, and um, just live this life out. A Christian doesn't do it on his own. A Christian doesn't live a life of Christianity. A Christian has Jesus Christ living his life out through us. Amen. So the evidence of a true Christ follower is a person who follows Jesus Christ. Not a person who follows a tradition or a religion. No, a person who says they're a Christian follows the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't ever let anybody tell you that Christianity is a religion. Christianity, uh, first of all, we were called Christians by those in the first century church. They called those people, those disciples, which were who they were, Christians. They said, aren't you guys (laughs) Christians, the ones that were with Jesus, that were Christ-like? So don't let anybody try to get you into the corner and say, well, how is your religion better than my religion? You have to stop right there. And and, and, in, in love, you have to say, hey, this is not a religion. This is a relationship between me and God the Father through God the Son. And because I have a relationship and I have been forgiven by God the Son, He um, allowed me to have the Holy Spirit, which is Him again in the third person, to live in me, to lead me into all truth. Amen? So tonight's topic, we're going to be talking about work. Who's the boss? When you work for somebody, are you really working to uh, really get accolades from a man or are you working unto the Lord so that way you know definitely where your reward comes from so in either scenario whether you're trying to gain accolades at your current position you might be a business owner entrepreneur self-employed an investor whatever you are whatever you're doing the question should be who's the boss are you the boss or am I the boss or you know how does this thing work out and another question before we pray is what if my work has nothing to do anything to do with Christian, Christianity. How can God be glorified in your work? That's a good question, right? So let's pray and we'll take it to the Father. And we we just hope that he will speak about this topic. Amen. Father, I thank you for the opportunity. 
You have given me the opportunity to share your gospel, your good news, your truth, your way, your wisdom, Lord God, to anyone who chooses to listen to this podcast. I pray, Lord God, a supernatural increase in every single one of the listeners, not only them, but their families as well, that they would, Lord God, sense and feel and um, be empowered by your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and that you would do a great work in the hearts of all those who say yes to you, Lord God, and they said no to themselves. I pray, Lord God, for increase in all areas of life for every single listener, Lord God, that you would save them, renew them, restore them, redeem them. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen. Amen. So the main scripture is going to be based off of Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. So remember that scripture because we're going to get to it in a couple of minutes. But this is what sparked up this whole Bible study when I saw that. First of all, it's one of my scriptures that I've been living by for years in my workplace. When I used to work for someone else, I used to when 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 I used to get frustrated, I used to always go to Colossians 3, 23 and 24 and remind myself that I'm working unto the Lord because he is the one. You know what? Let's just read it now. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. Work willingly at whatever you do, willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. So I would really remind myself about this scripture when I would get frustrated, when things weren't going my way, when the money wasn't there. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. And it really took me through. I've been working for someone else since I was 13 all the way till last year. Um, a long time. <laughs> so uh, I finally took the step of faith, started walking on water and started doing my own business that I already had going on in the background. But I took it um, to the level of actually doing it um, all the time now. Amen. Every day is Friday. That's my my um, my theme now. So so I took the opportunity that God gave me. Amen. This is a, a grace thing. This is a faith thing. This is all about You know, if God told you to do it, you do it type thing. So uh, it was nerve wracking. Yes, of course. But now all the time and all the years I saw the scripture and I recited the scripture, I memorized the scripture. Now I'm truly working for the Lord because I know that my reward, my inheritance comes from Jesus Christ. So all along, God was preparing me, although I think in my own life and my own experience, I think he had told me what to do years ago. I heard his voice and I just procrastinated. I was afraid to take the step full time ministry, you know, and work on my own and have my own business. Um, But thank God for his grace that he allowed me 12 years later to do what he said to do 12 years ago. And he allowed me to do it. And I'm seeing success all because it's a grace thing. Amen. God is no respecter of persons. You know, he could do it for me. He could do it for you. He could do it for anyone he chooses. Amen. But when you find a promise in God, when you find a word that sticks out to you, memorize it, keep it, own it, personalize it, keep it for yourself and say it to everyone. Right. So who's the boss? First of all, if you look at the history behind work, because God created us right in the image of God, we are created. Right. Genesis chapter two, very in the very beginning stages. Right. Genesis chapter two, verses two to nine. Uh, says it like this, Genesis chapter 2 and verses 2 to 9. Where am I? Where am I? On the seventh day, having finished his task, God rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from his work of creation. It doesn't mean that God was tired, by the way. It means that he did everything. He saw it was good and took a day off rested this is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth right so genesis chapter 2 we could see that god worked he worked it out spoke everything into existence amen and watched his work created when the lord god made the heavens and the earth there were no plants or grain growing on the earth for the lord god had not sent any rain and no one was there to cultivate the soil So you see, the earth was created uh, for us to cultivate, to work it, right? But nobody was there yet. Verse 6, but water came up of the ground 
and watered all the land. And the Lord God formed a man's body from the dust of the ground and breathed, Elohim breathed into it the breath of life, and the man became a living person. You know, this is God's work. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east. So God did all that work. There's water coming up from the ground. And here's the man in a garden that is fully functional already. Okay, just want to let you know that. Verse 8, then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had created. Verse 9, and the Lord God planted all sorts of trees in the garden, beautiful trees that produce delicious fruit. At the center of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now let's skip to verse 15. Stay in Genesis chapter 2. Go to verse 15. And the Bible says, uh, 14, 15, The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and care for it. So that was our work. Our, our work is anchored in God's very character. Part of being made in his image is sharing the industrious and creative aspects of his nature. We were here to till the land that was already there. God created everything we see, everything we don't see, the heavens and earth, put man right on board, planted the trees, everything. And all Adam, the first man had to do was tend the garden. And if you keep on reading that was beautiful. Chapter one, beautiful. Chapter two, beautiful. The whole whole Bible is beautiful, but there are some disappointments <laughs> that we we did that got fixed up too as well. In chapter three, then you get the fall of man. But you see, our work is anchored in God's very character. Work is not a curse. To so work is not a curse, right? Because you actually get blessed when you work hard. You know, hopefully, um, if you work for somebody, hopefully your boss is fair in your pay, and your wages, and your benefits, and things like that. But when you keep everything in perspective and you know where how work and where work came from, what was it designed for, you will see that God's um, our anchor. God's the boss. Second Thessalonians chapter three. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verses six to 13. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, we give you this command with the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. Stay away from any Christian who lives in idleness. That means like couch potatoes, gamers that stay gaming all the time and they never go to work. Stay away <laughs> from any Christian who lives in idleness and doesn't follow the tradition, or here it is, of hard work we gave you. For you know that you ought to follow our example. We were never lazy when we were with you. We never accepted food from anyone without paying for it. So therefore, if the disciples were paying for food, that means that they were working to get paid. And as a matter of fact, they said they worked hard and they used in that as an example. It's, it's right here. We're reading it. Verse seven. For you know that you ought to follow our example. We were never lazy when we were with you. We never accepted food from anyone without paying for it. We worked hard day and night so that we would not be a burden to any of you. Amen. And my ministry here, Cell Radio Network. I don't make um, the price to join the network or to have it shown the network a burden. I do the uh, hard work to get it to where it's at. And then when you get on board, I'll work hard to get your podcast or your show or your video to where it needs to go. Amen. So I don't make it a burden. I work hard day and night, right, to get things ready for those who come on board. Celebrate the network should be rest assured that I'm working hard to get their um, ministry or their radio show or their podcast or their video blog to where it needs to go. And that's an example that I learned from first for my dad. I saw him working hard all his life. So I don't know nothing else but to work hard. Amen. But now I know who I'm working for in all actuality. I'm working for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the boss. So where were we? Verse number eight. We never accepted food from anyone without paying for it. Verse nine. It wasn't that we didn't have the right to ask you to feed us, but we wanted to give you an example to follow. Verse 10, even while we were with you, we gave you this rule. Whoever does not work should not eat. That's a rule of thumb, right? You don't work, you don't eat. We get that from the scriptures. It was right there, right? Verse 11, yet we hear that some of you are living idle lives, refusing to work, 
and wasting time meddling in other people's business. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we appeal to such people. No, we command them, settle down and get to work. Earn your own living. Wow, are you kidding me? That's in the scriptures? Yes, it's in the scriptures. Christians are commanded to work hard at whatever they do unto the Lord. Verse 13, and I say to the rest of you, dear brothers and sisters, never get tired of doing good. So while you're working, while you have your own business, maybe you're self-employed, maybe you're an investor, whatever part of those categories that you are, work hard, right? Work hard at whatever you do. Amen. So if your work has nothing to do with anything Christian, you glorify God in your work by working hard unto him. You get the inheritance, which is better than any 401k, 501k or retirement plan, IRA, Roth or whatever. It's better than that. You get God's inheritance and you're earning a living because you're working hard for it and you're helping others because it should be a part of what you're doing should be helping others. Like, for instance, in this scripture, um, the Christians here are saying, hey, we weren't lazy. You know, you gave us food. We paid for it. We, we're not coming here to freeload. We're not idle. We're not lazy. We're not trying to make it a burden for us to come to your church or come to your house. No, we work hard. We make a living. We eat and we help we help others because the Bible says right here, don't get tired of doing good. Never get tired of doing good. Continue to do good. God is good. Only God is good, as a matter of fact. So if God is good, amen, so we should never get tired of good or of doing good because God is good all the time. And what? All the time, God is what? Good. Amen. And here we go. Let's re- let's approach Colossians 3.23. Now we know the basis of that. We could approach Colossians 3.23 again. I won't read it again, but basically it's going to say, The way we approach work is evidence of our relationship to Christ. If we approach work as hard, honest, you know, respectful and just helping others and doing good, then we're telling people all around us in our workplace, in our business, whether we're self-employed or an investor, we're showing them that God is being glorified. God gets the glory. We put God first in everything that we do. We don't make our ministry an idol. We don't make our job an idol. We don't make money an idol. No, we put God where he is on the throne, right? He is already there. We don't put him there. He's there. But we recognize where he is. We recognize who's the boss. So that way, everything that we do, amen, will be a blessing to not only us, but to others. See, I love love being a a business owner, investor, and entrepreneur, self-employed. I love it because it gives me the opportunity to help others. It gives me the time to do this ministry. It gives me the opportunity to see my family grow, my daughter grow, to see it gives me time to travel now. It gives me time during the day to do those things that I could not do because I was constricted off time. I was, it was time was taken away um, literally for me. I couldn't do all the things that I needed to get done during the day because I was obligated to do something for someone else that, yeah, it benefited my family, but then it, it discredited um, some other things. So working to the Lord. Because he will make the way. He will provide. Amen. But we have to do our part. So even if it has nothing to do with um, Christian work or if, if you work outside of the church or it's not a ministry, we can show people that God can be glorified through the work, our work ethic, how we work hard, honestly help others. And we never get tired of doing good. Hope you're getting this because this is good. Can we work too hard? I think I think so. It depends on where our aim is. We call the work hard. We got to make sure that our work doesn't um, preoccupy us, that we endanger our health, our relationships, or our time with God. You know, my shoulder, and all the time that I was working for the last company I worked for, my shoulder started giving up. My knees started giving up. And then my back, you know, every now and then will stiffen up, tighten up. Yes, yeah, because of age um, um, and re- repetitive, repetitive lifting and all that stuff. I understand that's part of the situation. But in my mindset, I was like, no, I'm not going to give this organization, this corporation, my my knee. I'm not going to give them my shoulder. I'm not going to give them my back. No, that all belongs to the Lord. I'm giving my body as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. And then I will read Colossians 3, 23 and 24 to remind myself, hey, 
if this is the the situation and I'm, now my body's starting to re- reject the things that I'm doing at this place, it's the door is opening for me to go. You know, no um, hard feelings or anything like that. It's just a matter of using, uh, being wise and using wisdom, right? In Psalm 39, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, We are merely moving shadows, and all our busy rushing ends in nothing. We heap up wealth for someone else to spend. Isn't that crazy? So I get, I, I jokingly say, and I say I'm jokingly saying, and this is how I say it. I say, I work and my wife gets paid. It's a joke. You know what I'm saying? It's all good because I know um, that that's what I should be doing. I'm doing my part. But isn't that funny that you heap up wealth and someone else spends it, right? And verse 7, and so, and so, Lord, where do I put my hope? My only hope is in you. Rescue me from my rebellion, for even fools mock me when I rebel. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 3. Just as being too busy gives you nightmares, being a fool makes you a blabbermouth. <laughs> you say, you say what? Yeah, a blabbermouth. So we're called to work hard, of course. But we got to make sure that our work doesn't take away from our time with God. It doesn't endanger our health or our relationships. It's very important for you to remember that and for me to remember that too. So if you're stressed out, working hard, even it could even happen in ministry. I see people get burned out in ministry. And I scratch my head and say, wait a minute. If you're doing your ministry unto the Lord and God is empowering you to do that. Now, this is just me, the way I think. I'm not saying it's wrong if you ever got you know, tired out or whatever. But I'm saying in my thinking, I'm like, um... Hmm. Interesting. Um, if you're tired out, I think then, I don't know, you're doing it on your own strength. Because when I do stuff in ministry in the strength of the Lord, then we're talking. Then we're like, hey, um, Lord, thank you for the power. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for the strength you give me to get this work done. Because I know for sure ministry, family, work, business and all that i could not do anything of those type of things with the energy and the zeal i do it with without the power of god working through me right so uh if i'm burning out then i have to check who's doing the work and who am i doing it for amen because god will never fail us never leave us forsake us um you know he, he tells us to mount up on wings of eagles you know what i'm saying he tells us to be courageous go be strong and courageous he tells us that he, he will provide. He tells us that he will give us rest and strength and health. So we're doing it unto him. I don't think we would never. And he says the commandment, never get tired of doing good. So all those scriptures, I could mention more. But when I see a ministry or a minister getting burned out, then I, I kind of like start thinking, okay, what's going on here? Are they realizing that they need rest in God? to fuel up because we can't do everything. Uh, I'm raising my hand right now because I used to think I could do everything, save everybody, do everything. I, I didn't know how to say no to this, that, and the third, but I'm learning. Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 21. One day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a demon-possessed slave girl. She was a fortune teller who earned a lot of money for her masters. She followed along behind us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. And pretty much she was right, right? Fortune teller. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated, in other words, Paul got mad, that he turned and spoke to the demon within her. Notice he didn't speak to the lady. He spoke to the demon within her. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, he said, and instantly... Hear that snap? Instantly it left her. Jesus Christ. Power. Verse 19. Her master's hopes of wealth <laughs> were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted. They are teaching the people to do things that are against Roman customs. Ooh, sounds familiar. That's happening right now in the 21st, what was the 21st century. Yeah. In, in these times. <laughs> but um, hmm. there's a time to stop. 
we must make sure that we don't allow our work to compromise our values. So if somebody is telling you to do something at the workplace or maybe uh, to do something on your website that is not really honest or deceptive or maybe, um, you know, you know about a scam and you're going to pass it through, too, because, you know, that scam makes a lot of money. Got to make sure that we don't allow those type of things to compromise our values. Amen. Don't let that happen, because once that happens, then you're on your own again, because God, I, I love God. He deals with honesty. I'm honestly, I honestly go to God and say, I can't do this. I'm struggling in this. And and he's right there guiding me and guarding me, showing me grace, love and mercy. It's crazy. But if I start, there's so many scams I could do, so many gimmicks I could do with my network, with my businesses. It's, it's unreal. I see it happen to people and I warn people, hey, if you see a scam or a scandal uh, or if I see one, I'm going to warn people about it. Um, but I see people fall into the same trap over and over again. Uh, false promises and all that stuff, especially in the music industry, which I dabble in as well. Uh, online marketers do it all the time. They promise X amount of money and X amount of days and they sh- start um, shining money all over the screen and spreading money on the on the videos and all that stuff. You got to be careful because if you're looking at your work like that, like just to profit and gain over anybody anyway, um, you know, you got to make sure you don't compromise your values because we have to have values as a christian as a christ follower i have to have values right and my values have to be godly values otherwise then I might as well just just keep it moving and do about what i'm doing on my own exodus chapter 16 and 23 says it like this he replied the lord has appointed tomorrow as a day of rest a holy sabbath to the lord on this day we will rest from our normal daily tasks so bake or boil as much as you want today and set aside what is left for tomorrow. Now, the, a couple of weeks ago, I had a brother in Lord that came um, after church and we were fellowshipping. And um, I was telling him, I got to go clean the garage. And he was like, on a Sunday, on the Lord's Day? He said, man, you need to take a day of rest. And you know what I did? I, I, wanted, I was ready to go. I was going to do the garage. I had a friend over that was going to help me. And I said, you know what? You, you're right can't be doing this seven days. We ought to take one day of rest in the Lord. Rest and have fellowship, company, and all that stuff. There's a, time, there's a time, really, there's a time to stop our work in order to rest, to celebrate, and to worship God. So I took that day to fellowship with him and his wife. My, when my family was there. We had some friends over. We had a great time in the Lord, fellowship. We rested. We celebrated. We ate, and we worshiped God. So it's okay. Like, I know some people are workaholics. And, you know, it took me time to start easing. I used to be a workaholic, too. It took me time to settle that down and settle the issue in my heart. Who Who's the boss? Who am I working for? Where's my inheritance coming from? You know, how's my health? Am I, am I you know, spending enough time with my wife and my children and my kids? Am I calling my son enough, my mom enough? And I fail in a lot of areas, you know, but I'm aware. At least I'm aware and I could try to make changes to make things happen um, to the good of all the people um, that I'm connected to, especially my family, right? Mark chapter 6, verse 31 says, Then Jesus said, Let's go, let's get away from the crowds for a while and rest. There were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his disciples didn't even have time to eat. You ever been there? I'm waving my hand. You can't see me, but I'm waving my hand. I've been there. I've worked so hard at some events and ministry events and DJ and all that. Work so hard, and next thing you know, we'll be like, hey, we didn't even eat. As a matter of fact, people were eating, and we still didn't get nothing to eat. <laughs> but it's just that type of thing. We have to be aware. We have to stop. We have to rest. We have to celebrate and worship God. There's nothing wrong with that. So it, is it possible to work your way into heaven? Mm. People, they you know, by works, people live uh, works-based faith. There's a lot of them out there. Um the one I always talk about the most because they approach me the most, Jehovah Witness, it's a, a works-based faith. You know, you have to do this, that, and the third to gain access, um, you know, with the Father and all this other stuff. Uh, the Bible says something different in Ecclesiastes 2, 10, and 11, and we'll leave it here because I'm running out of time. Anything I wanted, I took. I did not restrain myself from any joy. I even found great pleasure in hard work an additional reward for all my labors. But as I looked at everything I had worked so hard to accomplish, 
it was all so meaningless. It was like chasing the wind. There was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. See? So although we need to work hard, work by itself doesn't bring ultimate fulfillment. Work by itself, works by themselves, do not give us access or any kind of, um, you know, accolades with God. So no, uh, I don't think we could work our way to heaven. I know we can't work our way into heaven because heaven is our, our destiny, right? Our destiny as a Christian, um, but it's God's home. And he lives within every single one of us who say yes to him uh, and ask for forgiveness, right? So I hope you got something out of this Bible study, the Blaze Bible study, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you're just listening for the first time, welcome to the Blaze. I hope you listen again. Everything is free downloads. So go to uh, soulwinnerswithaz.org forward slash Bible study and you'll get the archives and you can download them, share them, spread them all over the Internet. Um, make sure what I'm saying is correct by reviewing the scriptures that I read. Amen. Um, I always say, don't trust me. Right. Don't trust my word. Trust God's word. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember, God, he's good. Peace. Don't miss the final weeks of Designs for Different Futures at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Explore visionary designs that promise to transform how we live, eat, travel, dress, and even love. Closes March 8th. Book tickets at philamuseum.org. Will your child be ready for kindergarten? At Chesterbrook Academy Preschool, the answer is yes. Our curriculum offers the perfect balance of learning and play. Our teachers personalize that experience for each child through engaging activities that develop the skills they need to be ready for what comes next. Attend a Chesterbrook Academy open house on Saturday, January 25th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. To find a preschool near you, click the banner or visit ChesterbrookAcademy.com. That's ChesterbrookAcademy.com.